Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be discussing about the last problem of today's weekly contest, maximum deletion on a string. The problem states that you are given a string S of lowercase English letters, and you can perform the following operation. The first operation is you can delete the entire string, and the second operation is you can delete the first I letter of S if next I letter of S is equals to the first I letter of X. Okay, so uh, these are the two operations that you can perform. Now you have to perform this operation repeatedly until the entire string S is deleted. And finally, you have to return the maximum number of operations that you can perform. So for example, in this string, ABC, ABCD, ABC, you can perform one operation in which you remove ABC because ABC and ABC, like the first I letters, which is first three letter is equals to next three letter. So you can remove ABC. So in first operation, let's say you remove ABC. Now in second operation, you remove the entire string. So there are total two operations that you have performed and you can uh, find out yourself. There is no other way where you can perform greater than two operation while removing the entire string. So the answer for this particular string is S. So hope you get this question. Now before jumping to the solution, I would encourage you to solve this problem yourself because this is again one of those standard recursion problem that we have solved a lot of times in this channel. So I would encourage you to pause the video and start solving yourself. Uh, hope you've tried. Let's now look at the solution. Let's say this is the string A, B, A, A, B. Okay. So in one operation, you can remove this A, right? Because this, the first I letters, you can remove first I letters if it is equals to the next I letter. So here, I equals to one. So first letter is equals to the next letter. So you can remove this A in first operation, right? Let's say you remove A. Now, if you remove A, what will you be left with? You will be left with this string, right? A, B, A, B. Now this string is actually a substring or basically what you have to find now, what is the maximum number of operation that you can, that you require to delete the string A, B, A, B. So in a way you are solving the same problem, but with less constraint. This is standard recursion, right? So let's try to define the recursion. Let's say F of I denotes what is the maximum number of uh, operation that you can perform if you have to delete everything starting from index I. So in this case, I is this. So what is the maximum number of operation that you can perform that you have to perform to remove the entire string uh, starting from index I. This is our F of I. Now let's try to think what all state we can go to starting from F of I. Let's say I equals to one. So let's say we are finding out F of one. Okay. So from F of one, we can go to F of two. Why? Because you can see here again, A is equals to A, right? So you can remove this A again. So from F of one, you can go to F of two. Now second, you can remove A, B again because this a b the first three letter is equals to next three letter so you can remove a b again so from f of 1 you can go to uh, f of uh, 4 right now uh, next thing that you can do is you, should, you can remove the entire string okay so if you can uh, if you can remove the entire string the you are you will be going to f of uh, 7 that is like zero. So basically from F of one, you can go to several possible states and for each possible state, you can again compute the value of F for each of them. And whichever gives you like among this maximum, whichever gives you maximum plus one is your answer. Why plus one? Because uh, you like you have performed one operation by, by removing this or this or this you have performed you have already performed one operation and then whatever is the value the remaining value you will take from here okay so that's basically the solution now you can memorize it uh, and you will like you will be not calculating the same state again and again so that that's the simple thing let's look at the pseudo code there is one missing piece here we'll look at it but let's look at the pseudo code first so we are finding out f of index. So initially we will be calling this function with f of zero. Basically give me minimum number of operation that is required to remove the entire string starting from index zero. Okay. And initially we can, we 
can always perform one operation. Why? Because because we can always remove the entire string no matter what. Now we can remove first i characters. Let's say i is length. So we can remove this length number of characters if this uh, substring starting from index to index plus length minus one is equals to this substring index plus length uh, to index plus two cross length minus one. If these two substrings are equal, then we can definitely remove a substring of length len from starting from index i or ind, and we will be ending up at index i and d plus uh, plus length. So we will we can take our result as maximum of whatever we have calculated till now and transition whatever maximum operation that we get by transitioning to this particular state. So hope this piece makes sense. Now only thing that is uh, like first of all what is the time complexity of the solution for each index i and d you are doing something okay and as we discussed we will memorize it so that we don't need to do the same thing again and again so for each index something for each index i and d you are doing something now what is this something you are iterating over length so what is the maximum or the worst case value of length must worst case value of length would be n basically you will be iterating over from 1 to n or n or n by 2 right so basically let's uh, it is in the order of n so for each index i and d you are doing something of order of n like now uh, first of like let's assume that this if condition is uh, let's ignore this if condition complexity let's say this can be done in order one how this can be done in order one we will look at it but let's say this can be done in order one so what you are doing now for each index i and d you are iterating over all the lengths which is of the order of order of n so how many i and d are there total n possible indexes are there right so the complexity that you are like that we will be getting with this solution is order n square and this is sufficient because n is up to 4000 only okay so this is the solution now only thing that remains is how to answer this query that whether these two substring are equal or not efficiently in order one that's the only piece left let's look at that so we need to just find out we will we will use hashing here okay so what we will be doing we will find out the hash of l1 to r1 basically we will be finding out a function where uh, which can give give us the hash of any substring l to r now what like for this particular thing what we will be doing we will be calling the function with l1 and r1 and then l2 and r2 and just verify whether the hash are equal or not okay so now the only thing that remains is how to compute this hash so let's uh, like for those who are new uh, like who are new to hash uh, let's discuss little a bit little bit so let's say you have to find the hash of abc okay so hash is nothing but you input a string and you get an integer out of it okay so you are expecting an integer out of it so that you can compare or store it efficiently so for abc what is what like how can you convert this abc to an integer you can compute like you can store you can say that okay a is 1 b is 2 c is 3 so i will just do 1 plus 2 plus 3 and that is my hash that is correct like that is that is also correct but this 1 plus 2 plus 3 can be easily broken by if we calculate the hash of bac okay because if we do this hash function basically sum up all the indexes so then this BAC would also have hash 2 plus 1 plus 3, which will be equals to the hash of ABC. Basically, we, we got a collision. So only thing that you have to take care by calculating hash function is you have to minimize the number of collisions that you can get. Okay, so this is also a valid hash function, but we, we see that we can easily get a counterpoint where we calculated the hash of some other string, but we get the same value. So we have to remove the collision and why this happened because we haven't like with this hash function we haven't took care of positions like we haven't uh, uh, encountered like we haven't did anything in our hash function that says that okay one is that position one two is that position two three is that position three so now you can uh, like with this approach you can think okay uh, what about I multiply this by position this is the position and this is the value. 
okay so what you will do you will uh, you can just pick for hash abc let's say you say that okay i will multiply with position as well so position 2 value 2 then position 3 value 3 okay now what will be the hash of bac with this approach in position 1 value is 1 in position 2 value is 1 and in position 3 value is 3 okay so now you can see you uh, like you managed to avoid this collision by including something called position in our in your hash function so this is again a valid hash function but you can also simply find like there you can do some uh, trick basically just remove uh, like a with b and you will be getting the same hash function so you can do tricks to get the collision point of this hash function as well so this is also not, not a good hash function but this is better than the previous one so hope you get the basic idea what hash function is you ha you can you have to come up with some mathematical formula that will convert your string to an integer now that mathematical formula can be anything only thing that you need to take care while calculating that formula is you have to make sure that uh, the number of collisions that you are getting can be minimized with this formula with that with the formula that you that you're taking so this is also a valid hash function but you can easily find the collision point of this i will leave you i will leave it to you as an exercise and it is very easy you can find it in next 2 uh, to 3 minutes to yourself so what like what we can do but like or what is a better hash function than this uh, this hash as well is something you bring up prime here so let's say you took this p to the power of i into s of i okay so what is p to the power of i let's say p is a prime and you raise it to the power of index let's say i i is the index you are taking care so you raise it to the power of index and multiply it with the well with the value si so for example in this case what you can do you can sim uh, like let's say you have to find the value of abc so in with this formula the value of abc would be p into 1 okay plus p square into 2 and then plus p cube into 3 okay so that will be the value of your hash for this particular string abc and i can like assure you that you will not be able to find the breaking point or the collision for this as as easily as this here also we took care of positions but you can find the breaking point of this particular hash function or collision point of this particular hash function very easily but you will they like you will be having a hard time finding out the collision point for this particular hash function so this is a better hash function than the previous one so we will be using this hash function uh, in like most of the time this hash function is good enough uh, but there are there are like this hash function also has collision points so you need to take care of it but most of the time it is good enough so in this problem this with this hash function is good enough so what we will be doing we like for calculating a hash of l2r we will be starting from uh like we will be applying this position and we will just uh, uh come up with the hash value of this so what we are doing let's say for a we come up with hash function like hash value of p okay now for a a we come up with p plus p square now notice that we are multiplying this with a as well but because a is 1 so we are not multiplying this anything now let's say you calculate the hash function of a again p plus p square plus p cube now let's say calculate the hash function of hash value of a plus a b p p square p cube and then 2 into p to the power 4 okay so that is the overall hash value of a b similarly you will keep on doing this for every substring starting from a okay and you store it in some array now second you will start from second day and you will keep on doing this for every substring starting from second day and you will you will fill this part then you will start with third a and keep on doing this for everything starting from third b so you like for calculating this entire table you will be requiring order n square time and that is fine because n is only up to 4000 so you can do this now once you have this table now finding or uh, answering this query like whether the string starting from index to index plus 10 minus 1 and index plus 10 to index plus 2 cross 10 minus 1 are equal or not are just matter of looking up the proper values here 
let's say this and this, and just uh, equal, equal, like checking whether they're equal or not. That's it, okay? So let's look at the code that will make things a bit more clear. So what we have done, we have pre-computed the hash. Uh, what this pre-compute hash will do, we'll look at it, but this, this is just calculating this table that we just discussed. Now, once we have this hash, we are just calling our function max operation, which is, this is our f. Now, we, this f takes an index, okay? Now, if index is equals to length, basically it crosses the string, then it means the entire string is already deleted. You don't need to perform any operation, we just return zero. And then this is just simple memoization technique. Initialize, we, we have initialized this array with minus one. So if it is not minus one, it means we have calculated its value previously. So we just return that value instead of recalculating it again. Now, if it is minus one, then this is the first time we are calculating the value for this particular index. So what we have done is we iterate over everything from one to length. Now, we calculated L1, R1, and L2, R2. And if this is a valid query, like uh, if it's a valid range, then we find out whether uh, L1 to R1 is equals to L2 to R2 with this is equal method. And if it is equal, then we apply this formula that we discussed, like one plus max operation of R1 plus one. Okay, so this is what we have done in this max operation. Now, only thing that remains is this pre-compute hash and is equal function. So what pre-compute hash we are doing, we have initialized our uh, 2D array uh, and we have uh, put the number of rows and n. Now for each indexes, for each j, we are starting from j and going up to n and calculating the hash function, hash function of that particular substring starting at j. So what we have done, if you remember what we are doing is, if let's say you have the hash value of a and you have to compute the hash value of a b. So what you can do, you can just simply do, you can just simply do p to the power of four into two and just add it to the previous value, right? So in a way you, we maintain a prefix sum and the, this will help uh, finding out the value easily. So that's what we have done. We, we have calculated the prefix, like we are taking the prefix sum with ourselves and for each value, we have done this power into s power uh, s of k whatever is there in s of k now this power is something it is p to the power of uh, p to the power of uh, i every time okay so like every time we uh, process one index we are incrementing this power so this is p to the power of i every time so hope this like makes sense now after we computed the hash for in is equals function what we have done we have just find out the length and we are checking hashes of L1 contains the hashes starting at index L1, okay? So we check whether this particular length, hash of this particular length starting at index L1 is equals to hash starting at L2 of this particular length. If they're equal, we return true, otherwise we return false. So hope this entire solution makes sense. If you have any doubts in this problem, please post them in the comments below. I would be happy to answer. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It will help uh, this to reach maximum people. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.